thought I'd like to kick off a new mayoral year with a couple of, um, well, look, I think they're important thoughts. Uh, look, but... I hate to interrupt you so early, Cole, but um, I'd be failing in my duty if I didn't remind you yeah, that we're, we're broke. broke. No, I know, I know. Pull it down! No! I demand to see the mayor! Hey! Hey, don't say it! Get out of here! I want to see the bloody... That's why I've been so upset. So upset I've been too scared to tell you, thinking you'll be angry and won't understand. Why didn't you open a bloody boutique? You can't do this, Greg. You can't put in a recommendation to raise childcare fees without discussing it with me. I only can't stop you making a very generous offer for childcare. One the councillors will all go for. But he tells me the new councillor's all in favour of it. Well, you've had an offer, Greg. Yeah, from a very successful private childcare operator. That's a coincidence. Well, life does have these coincidences. You just traded childcare for a planning issue. No, we haven't. You just passed a motion. A call for expressions of interest. We'll just see if there's uh -huh. any interest out there. That's all. Listen, we have not voted to sell off childcare, Liz, and we won't. Don't worry, Liz, it'll be all right. I'm fed up with hosing down all the good ideas the councillors keep coming up with, especially coal. As someone said, there is no end to the chaos caused by a good idea. What's worse is it gets in the way of the very important reforms I want to put in place. Isn't what you're really worried about that Cole doesn't like you? I don't need to be liked. As a weakness in a manager, George, I want to be respected. You're a no man. Oh, so now I'm a no man. Well, you're always saying no to him. Well, someone has to, the rubbish he comes up with. No, it goes like this. Stage one. Oh, Cole, what a wonderful idea. A pork sausage. I'd have never thought of that. Stage two, I'm still working on your pork sausage. Stage three, have you noticed the bad smell around here? Stage four, bad news, Cole. The bad smell's coming from your pork sausage and everyone's blaming you. Stage five, I got rid of that pork sausage for you. Stage six, what a wonderful bloke Greg is. You think so? Use your initiative. Tell him you like him, tell him you respect him. Show him by saying yes. Make yourself useful. You do all of that, he still won't like you, but he will renew your contract. I've been thinking we should do this for quite some time, Cole. Maybe uh, have a game of squash every now and then. Oh, yeah? You could come around on the weekend for a barbecue with Tina and the kids. Have well, still got the Dobermans? Look, they're fine, you know. It's just that one. I'll lock them in the shed. Um, can I get two middies, please? Uh, one heavy, one light. You yeah, know, I'm really glad you decided to do this, though, Greg. It's very mm -hmm. exciting yeah. ideas I'd like to talk good, about. Good, good. Yep, yeah, glad to hear it. Remember that, um, uh, the local... Cole, uh... could you hang on to that exciting idea just for a sec? Um, yeah. Let me see if, see if I can come at this from a different direction. Thanks. There are certain things which, for a variety of reasons, um, we've never said to each other. Yep, probably, yep. Because it's unfortunate, but uh, for whatever reason, unfortunately, we... we thanks. Don't, don't say these things to each other, and uh, that's it's, it's very unfortunate. Possibly, yep. Yeah. Like, like, for example, you don't know, I mean, you're unaware of. I mean, it's not your fault, because I made it clear to you that... Um, I like you, Cole. Personally, quite a lot. And also, I respect what you stand for. I, I respect what you're doing. And I admire your intentions. And, and more importantly, I really like working with you, Cole. You're not going to hug me, are you, Greg? No, no. I, I just want to see us working together 
better. Well, that's excellent. Really excellent. Yep, that's excellent. So, idea that uh, I wanted to talk to you about. Remember, mm -hmm. a couple of months ago, I was telling you about that local uh, local government thing. Thank I you, thought, everyone, uh, for coming. Now, before I start, is there anybody here with a mobile phone that is switched on that I can borrow for a moment? I'll give it right back. Oh. Yeah, here we go. No, mind you, Thank you, sir. No, no, no. So, I guarantee you. I'm going to show you something amazingly new that you have never seen done with a mobile phone before. Unless you were here last night. No. <laughs> now, this is something that takes the stress out of those moments when some annoying person's mobile phone goes off at a time when there should be absolute silence. <laughs> Don't worry, I should have told you that this is a magic bag. It's a magic bag. Magic. I need some more practice. Is there anybody else with a mobile phone? Good morning. You've reached Arcadia Waters Council. This won't take very long. It's just the quickest way I can think of to explain my misgivings about privatising childcare. Hey, Albert. I brought somebody to meet you, our new councillor, Karen Schumacher. Oh, yeah. Hello, councillor. Hello, Albert. Albert was uh, on staff here looking after these gardens until the whole section was sold off to the private operator. But as Albert says, all his wonderful work's shriveling up and dying because it's not being properly looked after. Not much to do these days, so when I drive by and see all this withering away, I... Well, until somebody tells me to stop. Thanks, Albert. Bye. If privatisation does this to a garden, what will it do to children? Are you telling me Albert just turns up and does this and we're not paying him? That's right. I think the Mayor's going to be critical in all this. Some of the councillors have got silly sentimental ideas about keeping childcare in-house, but uh, I've spent a lot of time working on the Mayor. He doesn't know it, but he's doing everything I need him to do. All I want you to do is to get me a look at the other tenders when they come in. Not a problem. That's good, then. So when do we meet again? When you have the other tenders. We get this quote from South Island Parks and Gardens, a New Zealand company. Originally it was just South Island Roads, never had anything to do with gardens before. And their quote's amazingly low. We say yes, they get the job. And it turns out they accidentally, in good faith, left a few items out of the quote. So by the time we've made the adjustments, it's all costing more, not less. Yeah, but we've learned from that, haven't we? I mean, I can't believe we'd make the same mistake again. <laughs> The general manager who did the tough deal on gardens is the same one who'll do a tough deal on childcare. Greg, that's our boy. Yeah, look, I'm sorry, I really do have to go, but Liz, you're leaving the councillors out of this. We won't let Greg make the same mistake again. We'll vet the contract and make sure he supervises it properly this time. So you're already talking like you're going to do it? Not at all. I can see it coming. No, I'm agreeing with your concern. If a plant dies, you put in another. You can't do that with children. <laughs> we won't. Okay. See ya. Yeah, I just hope we don't get a quote from South Island Roads and Children. So... What is the backbone of our national economy? Small business, two words. And what is small business? Small business is local business. And what is the greatest threat to local business? Globalisation. Now, people aren't actually going to their local bookshop anymore, they're buying their books on the internet. And their airline tickets, CDs, even uh, groceries, all sorts of things. So, are we going to just sit back and let this happen and watch while Arcadia Waters becomes just another street of empty shops on the fringe of the global village, or... Are we going to seize the initiative, kickstart our local businesses, get them onto the net and sell them to the world? Because I see this as an opportunity for us to step forward into the future together. Local government, local business, stepping into the future together. That's pretty good, Cole. Would you like that? Local government, local business, stepping into the future together. It's a bit of a mouthful. I'm very happy for you to have a go at it. See if you can come up with a title that encompasses local business, local government, the future, and doing it together. And uh, internet and globalisation, all in a snappy little phrase. Thanks, Cole. Crowd, great atmosphere sideline. Some real early eagerness. I couldn't believe it. Mm. I mean, the local heart of the global village, what a joke. Uh, he might be on the right track, then. He's not. Darling, all business has to decide how much it's going to be part of the global economy, no way. Well, what's he actually doing about it? Setting up some kind of internet suggestion box so people can... Well, Japanese do it. Seems to work for them. You're coming to bed? I was waiting for you. Oh, congratulations, Carl. It's very good. 
Arcadia Waters, the local heart of the global village. It's amazing Good. the rubbish you read about in the local paper. Warwick still know about your ad in the personal columns, does he? Uh -huh. I think he was the first person to hear about the global economy. <laughs> Everyone on the Cole, planet's heard about it, Cole. Well, a lot of people are very worried about it, yeah. Biddy. And so far, no one has come up with a meaningful strategy for a local economy. Yeah, but this suggestion box idea, it might work in Japan, it's not going to work in Arcadia Waters. Oh, well, people can fax or write if they don't have access to email. Yeah, which many people do. Yeah. Speak yeah. These days. It's if the way Cole maintains his, uh, you know, his, his dialogue with you? the community. If you want ideas about business, you talk to people in business. Like I do, all the time. No, I'm right behind you on this one, Cole. Good Greek. Any messages? Janice, any messages? Oh, I'm sorry, Cole. I didn't see you come in. It's okay, you don't need to bring anyone. I won't come any closer. I'll just stay here and talk. What do I talk about? Just want to ask a question. What question? How would I find out if the mayor's got a fax I sent him? You can bring him up and ask him. Is he in? I don't. I'm not supposed to. I really don't want the mayor to see this fax. Well, why'd you send it then? I might have used slightly strong language and do you think your secretary about it? Why did you send it? This morning, about an hour ago? No, no, definitely not there. So where would it be? Well, when faxes come in, they're sent down to records and they're photocopied, then the photocopies are kept, and then the originals are delivered to the person they're addressed to, usually. And how long does that take? About two days. So where is the fax now? I'll just check for you. Is that the fax machine? Is that the fax that all the faxes come into? Have you got the facts? I've got Mr Mike Lemoyne here. He's I told you not to ring anyone. You've got it, haven't you? I can't give it back, though. Why not? It's in the system. You give it! You can't get it once it's in the system. Give me the facts! Give me the facts! Give me the facts! Give me a favour! Get the facts! Burn it, whatever! I'm going, I'm going! I'll be back, you bastard! Hi, Janice. These are replies to Cole's column on supporting the local economy. Yes, Helen. You're looking very nice today. Thank you. 36 we got, and I've sorted them to three piles. Lost and desperate, hopeless and... Possible. About equal numbers. Shame, you know, you'd think if you ask people to come up with big picture ideas, they'd understand what you mean by big picture. Apparently not. Well, we should publish some of them, though. Here's one. This guy wants a hip replacement for his wife so she can get back to work in his auto-electrical business. It is a sad case. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hang on. Here's you one. Sure, uh, Greg, you sure you got time for this? Oh, I've always got time for a good idea. This guy says he's an entertainer at the moment working the... Conady nights at the Arcadia Grand oh, Hotel. Yeah, yeah, Blake wants us to send him to the Edinburgh Festival. He oh. says he's confident that he could follow in the footsteps of other successful Australians such as Lano and Woodley. Who's Lano and Woodley? Lano and Woodley. They're good. They've been on television. Never heard of them. Well, they probably appeal to a young audience in Newcastle. Says all he requires is a return economy airfare, which will pay back as soon as he becomes famous. And that. Ah, oh, that guy. Oh, hang on. This is that bloke that we saw the other night at the hotel. The, oh, yeah. Yeah, the one with my <laughs> yeah, mobile. No. Yeah. <laughs> he was funny. Yeah. He was funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, return economy, that's not that much, yeah. is it? Uh, hey, you're always saying I need to appeal to a younger demographic. Yeah, but this is hardly supporting the local business, is no, it? No, no, but you go looking for gold. You, you find a diamond, you don't throw it away. It'd be a great story. Mayor Beck's young entertainer in quest for fame. I think you could be onto something. Yeah, good publicity. I think we should get this bloke in. Yeah, do some sort of deal with him, eh? Uh, he could do his act in front of all the council, and you know what, I'll tell you what, I'd like to see him do that with that uh, Biddy's phone. <laughs> yeah, hey, no, no, that is a no, serious, a brilliant idea. Are you sure about this? Yeah, you bet I am. I mean, the biddies of this world, they might like to laugh at my column, but you only need to turn up one good idea to make the whole thing worthwhile. <laughs> This doesn't belong here. I'll file it with the rest of the hate mail. Uh, right, thanks everyone. Um, can, uh, can I introduce you to Sandy Maxwell? Sandy's the off-agenda item that I mentioned. And since this is an off-agenda item, I think we can all uh, relax and be a bit informal. But Sandy, just, just before we hear from Sandy, I'll, uh, I'll give you a bit of background on this. As you know, uh, one of the things councils often get criticised for is uh, we don't do enough for young people. Who and says we don't do enough for young people? Am I the only one who's sick of people saying we don't do enough for young people? Yeah. yeah. No, just, just a minute here. Well, what are they saying? That if we don't give them everything they want, that they'll wander the streets and make a nuisance of themselves and spray graffiti all over the place and no, get onto drugs and break into our houses and we'll all be sorry? Oh, please. She's right. That is what do they're we saying. we have to listen to this? No, she's got a... Spot on. Hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. We're not trying to solve the problem of the world's youth here. What happened to well, the local heart of the global village idea? That's still there. This is something because else. I'm very aware that all businesses, large and small, are faced with a big oh, decision yeah, right. about how to become part of the global economy. And I'm more than happy to find ways in which we can help our local business community. Yeah. It's a great idea. Yes, Mr Mayor. Why should we waste our valuable time listening to this young man? I move. We move on. Oh. Yeah, well, just hang on. Just have a think about this. You know, like we already support a number of young people with scholarships to places like New York, Vienna, Paris, London. Serious young people who studied the piano and the violin. Oh, 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 oh. Well, that's the top end of the market. But why not, you know, the same support or similar? 
to someone who applies himself to making us laugh. Can someone explain to me how a big decision about supporting local business turns out to mean giving money to a comedian? A comedian? Ah, oh, God. Now, I, I've seen him on the disgusting. No way, Jose. I move that we apologise to this young man for wasting his time. I yeah. second that. Absolutely, definitely. What, Council Levon, what? You, you don't even want to listen to his act now. He's here. No. These young people today, when I was... If I wanted a few extra bob, I had to... Yeah, all right, Councillor Bond. I don't think we want to get lost down your memory lane tonight. With all due respect, Carl, I, I think the pork sausage is starting to smell. What? Yeah, I, I suggest you drop this. Uh, it's, it's, it's not going to get up. Yep. It'll just backfire yep. on your small business yep. initiative, internet partnership thing. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking the same thing, Greg. Sandy, I sense the mood of the council is not particularly receptive at the moment. Yeah, tough audience. Yes, I do apologise. Thank you for coming. Wish you all the best for your career. Uh, thank you, everyone. And I'm on Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights at the Arcadia Grand Hotel. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. Back to the agenda. Next item, 2.11.16, renovations to the uh, surf club toilets. Oh, good. Hang on. In the car. You see, we've already got a comedian, Mr Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Oh, look, it wasn't personal what I said in there. You said I don't work hard. Now, I work as hard as anybody does at the piano or the violin or the contrabassoon or Toby the tuba. Come on, all you do is tell jokes. No, ma'am, I do not tell jokes. Well, you're not even funny. I write and perform my own material, which is the same as somebody writing what they play on the piano. Why don't you get a proper job? I had a proper job. I used to work at the stock exchange on the trading floor of the futures market. Trading what exactly? Okay, I lied, but you can see how easily your perceptions could change. Why are you trying to impress me? Because I want to go to the Edinburgh Festival, and I cannot do so without financial support. A handout. Think of it as venture capital. Wouldn't it be easier just to get a job, or at least a part-time job? Well, give me a part-time job. Why me? You could save me from a life of crime. Look, no, I'm kidding. Just let me come and work for you. I'll do your dishes, I'll clean your car, I'll mow your lawn, whatever. And you'll see that I'm not lazy. I work hard and cheap. Cheaply. Yes, ma'am, I stand corrected. I'll work cheaply and hardly. <laughs> All right. But only because I can't resist a bargain. You can uh, come and see me tomorrow. You won't regret this, ma'am. Yeah, uh, I don't think I like this man business. What should I call you, uh, Mrs. Marchant? That makes me sound like your mother. Call me Biddy. Okay, Biddy. See you tomorrow. I'm not getting through to you, am I? And I'm not getting through to you. Biddy can see that my local business initiative is very exciting. Did you notice I was trying to talk to you about childcare? You, you watch. She'll try and take it over because she knows I'm right. We could make Arcadia Ward the, the local heart of, of the global globe. village. Why are you making fun of this? I'm trying to talk to you about childcare. Nothing to say about childcare. See you later then. Oh, hang on. There's nothing to say about childcare at the moment because we're still waiting for the expressions of interest but to come in. we will discuss it properly. We're discussing it now. As a council, I'd like to be able to reassure Liz that we'll discuss it properly and make sure it's a good contract with all the necessary safeguards in place. Yes. And we're not rushing into another quick stuff up and sell yeah, off like no. South London Roads and Gardens. If, if we do that, Karen, I've never ever said we're selling off childcare. All I've ever said is we'll call for expressions, expressions of interest. interest. I know, but that's the first step, isn't it? You know what they say about first steps. What do they say? The longest journey starts with a single step. First step. No, Single step. We will discuss it properly. Look, let me assure you, Karen, nothing will happen to childcare that is not of benefit to the parents, the council, and the staff. And the children. Yeah, of course. You meant to say that. You're right, I did. Speaking of staff. Very important, I believe our childcare workers are our greatest asset. What about Albert? Who's Albert? The gardener. Oh, Albert the gardener? What's he got to do with childcare? He's not being paid. He's not being. Greg got him to accept some sort of voluntary oh, right. arrangement. I think that's wrong. I think we're exploiting it. Oh, yeah, that'd be right. Typical Greg. However, he's been very eager to be helpful late, so I'll have a word to him. I've got to go this hey, way. You're not going to walk out of me, are you? Yeah, I am, sorry. What? That is really great. You get to talk about childcare. Yeah, I had to elbow my way in. Yeah, plus, you threw in Albert the gardener. Okay, okay, I owe you one. We never have enough time at these coffee meetings, Karen. Well, maybe we should make it lunch or something. Yeah, yeah, I'd like that. I might be able to talk about something other than council business. You're not dying to confess your passion for stamp collecting, are you? Or racing pigeons, perhaps? I'll, uh, I'll think of something else. But no, seriously, it's a good idea. Lunch. Okay, we'll do it then. Soon. Bye. One small step for coal. Oh, 
my God, is that from under my house? Uh, no, actually, there's a tunnel connecting under your house to several of your neighbours, and I've just dragged their stuff through as well. Well, it's hot work. You must be almost as whiffy as I am. Oh, no, I think uh, I'll win. <laughs> oh, I doubt that. You want to come in for a cold drink? Well, I'd kill for a beer. You won't have to get violent. Darling, you there? On the patio. Passing through, I'm playing squash with Rulo Vladdy, the minister's new advisor. Darling, this is Sandy. Sandy's doing some odd jobs for us. Well, well done, Sandy. Are you in tonight? Yes, I've got Gordon and Victor coming over. We're discussing ways of getting local business into the global economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, good luck. Well, I thought all business big and small had Darling, to be... what local business needs to do is capitalise on providing something you can't get on the global market. For instance, um, Sandy, he provides a local service. Excuse me for using you as an example, Sandy, but you are on my patio and you are drinking my beer and I think that gives me a license. Well, the second beer, you can say what you like. Help yourself. You don't get an odd job, man, on the internet. I get it. You need someone local. If something goes wrong, you get them back, you ring them, they're there in half an hour. Yeah. But what <laughs> Sandy has to do is use the internet like any other advertising medium. Let the locals know his services are available. Am I right, Sandy? Well, there's just one problem, and no amount of beer will pay for the insult. Ah, oh, yes? I'm not an odd job man. <laughs> Sandy's a comedian. He's doing odd jobs to pay for a trip to Edinburgh. <laughs> Good on you. you know, I uh, did a bit of acting when I was a student. I enjoyed it. But then banking took over, and I just got caught up making money. My God, that's an easy trap to fall into, isn't it? Tell you what, though, Sandy, no regrets. Well, I'll be off. Hi, darling. Mm. You smell nice. What is that? Just me and my Apre tennis pong. Don't show until I get back. Bye, Sandy. <laughs> you want another beer? I need something. G'day, Albert. Ah. Hello, Cole. I'd like him to be paid, Greg. Yeah, and I'd be failing in my duty to counsel if I didn't point out the risk of rehiring redundant workers just because they turn up and start doing it again. Yeah, but isn't he only doing it because South Island isn't? Yeah, which is the way we should be handling this. Get South Island uh -huh. to fulfil their contract. Okay, what about Albert? Oh, you keep doing this, don't you? you? You want me to keep handing money out to people when I'm the one who'll be strung up by the thumbs if we go over budget. Greg, I would like you to find a way to pay Albert for what he's doing. Yes, we're exploiting the poor man. All right, all right Cole, look, I'll see if I can define him as a consultant or something, okay? Leave it with me. I came to see if the expressions of interest are all in. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Is this on trial, Kate? Yeah. Any yeah. good ones? Well, I haven't had a chance to look at them yet. Can I see them? No, I'll be going through them with a fine tooth comb. Oh, God, Greg, what about a quick squeeze? No, that would be quite improper, Liz. There'll be plenty of opportunity to look at them before they go to council. Okay. There you go, Liz. There you go, Cole. Can you hold the flyer up a bit more? Yeah, good. Um, and these flyers, did council print them or...? No, no, what? we gave Sandy the money to pave the printing. It's always a pleasure, Barry, and both sides of politics can unite uh, over something that they both see as very important. I'd just like to thank uh, Biddy, Mrs Marchant. Um, she really deserves all the credit for this. She wanted to see if young people can come up with a feasible business plan so that uh, whatever money council kicks in uh, can be seen as an investment instead of a handout. Thanks, Sandy. And if I could just add, Barry, that the difference between this and what Cole was proposing is Cole wanted to give Sandy a handout of several thousand dollars of ratepayers' money, which I turned into a self-help free enterprise idea so that Sandy can earn the money he needs to go to Edinburgh. Oh, so you're still going to the Edinburgh Festival, Sandy? Well, that's what it's all about. Send Sandy to Scotland. Y yes, and if I could... Sorry, Sandy, but if I could just add here, Barry, that, that is exactly what I wanted the local business support scheme to do. Um, so whose idea was the leaflets? Oh, it is. No, bipartisan. This whole thing's bipartisan. Although, Barry, very happy to announce that very soon I'll be launching a local government, local business partnership uh, with a big event down here. Uh, we'll be inviting VIPs from all levels of government and from the surrounding councils just to show exactly what we can do down here at the local, local government level. Uh, there is going to be a very big spotlight on this, Barry, because uh, everyone talks about the global economy, but I want to focus on the local economy. I want to make Arcadia Waters the, uh, the local heart of the, the global village. What's this big event? You didn't handle that very well. You don't think that I yeah, handled... Someone's got to teach young Sandy you about gratitude. That and young blokes got to learn to say thank something you. Or other. What is it? Biddy was the one who knocked the whole Sandy Cole. idea on the head, now she's taken it over. Oh, that's something bigger than Sandy. That's something that Biddy will never have, the big exciting Cole. idea. What is it? It's a local government, local business initiative to do with the local and the global economies. Meaning what exactly? Hey, don't give me a hard time, mate. Still haven't found that book. OK, this is easy. 
You'll get rid of that, won't you? Of course I will. An impressively low price. Done. I'm sorry you're feeling so hostile. Oh, there's no hostility. I'm just not going to lift a finger to help somebody who's trying to take over my business. I'm sure I don't need to remind you that it's not your business. It's the business I've been running for the last eight and years. And you could go on running it. I'm going to. You could work for me. I mean it. So you're a liar as well. Well, I'd pay you a lot more money. Yeah, see, the difference between you and I is that I don't think everything comes down to money. I don't put a dollar value on everything. There are some things I think that are so important that they can't be allowed to fall into the clutches of somebody like you. And I'll make sure that they don't. Thank you for your time. How'd that go? <clears throat> Sorry I asked. Tell you what, every morning when you see me, say this. Liz, keep you cool. What are you going to say? Liz, keep you cool. Thank you. Well, I've put them into two piles. These are all people who want to get in on the act and wanting assistance with the printing of flies and leaflets, just like Sandy. And these are people complaining about the sudden avalanche of junk mail being stuffed into everybody's letterboxes and being paid for by us. <laughs> and the funny thing is, some people have got a letter in both piles. And you are aware of complaints from the Chamber of Commerce? Yes. Uh, amateurs undercutting the rates of professionals, which are already low in a very competitive market. Yeah, yeah, I know which does tend to wide out the whole idea of local government supporting local business. Yeah. Yeah, and while we're on this local government, local business partnership thing, do you want me to call the big announcement off? Yeah, we would call on this heavy green. No, not at all. I've got the vision, I've got the mission, I've got the goals. I was just wondering what sort of things you were going to announce on the night. What about that book, Helen? There's a book, Greg. It's called uh, Local Equals Global or something like that. Yeah, it's got the most fantastic ideas in it. The library tracked it down. Ah. It's called Back to the Corner Store. It's by Dr Priya Samajwadi. Oh, I thought he was Canadian. She is. I, th I think the most useful thing I could do at the moment, Cole, would be to um, to sort out this leaflet and pamphlet problem yeah. before everyone starts to blame you and it, and it backfires and ruins yes. this much more important yes. idea. Yeah, Greg, unfortunately, you might have to tread on a few toes. That's just part of my job. Yes, I'm, I'm writing this down. Can you just go a bit slower? What insurance? I'm um, advised by our lawyers that we cannot support someone who has no personal insurance, no public liability insurance, no workers' compensation insurance. In fact, uh, no insurance of any kind, Sandy. Well, I can't afford all of that. No. Which means you'll have to stop using those leaflets and saying that you have council support because for the reasons I've just explained, uh, we're forced to withdraw that support. Can I talk to the mayor about this? Well, you can. But it won't make any difference. I'm only acting under the mayor's instructions. Life's tough. Yes, yeah, one word for it. Yes, yes, I'm sorry to interrupt again, but what came after incompetent? Oh, question. Right. How do you spell that? This one's very good. Right. And there's also a whole lot of other stuff about what other people have tried in different places in a folder. Right. Just a lot of reading, mate. Thanks. Well, I'm glad you like them, because I'm not giving them to you. You don't deserve them. You're being a real bastard to this. Well, where's this coming from? Well, everyone knows that you're giving in to Greg and selling off childcare. Well, it was news to me. We still haven't even looked at the expressions of interest yet. If you really want to do all this support the local community stuff, our, our staff are our local community. Our childcare workers live here in Arcadia Waters. I mean, you can't say that you support the local community and then give them all the sack. No one's giving anyone the sack. Come on, give me the books. Is that a promise? Liz is jumping the gun. Is that a promise? Tell Liz to keep a shirt on and give me the books. I've already said it. I said it in council. Whatever happens, we will look after our staff. And when have we ever not kept a promise like that? I might have been got at, especially not by you. Pay for your own dinner tonight. This is a report on private childcare, which Greg has circulated to all the councillors. And guess what? It's very favourable. Have you seen it? Don't have to. 
Why would Greg send out a report on private childcare that didn't say it was all hunky-dory and wonderful? It's an independent report by some very reputable consultants. Yeah, but we all know if you pay consultants enough, you can get them to say whatever you want them to say. No, 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 I'm a consultant and I often say things my client doesn't want to hear. It's part of my job. This was not an attack on you. Any consultant worth their salt would do the same. I've seen too many consultants' reports I wouldn't even use as toilet paper. Liz, I know you'd like me to stand up in council and say don't privatise childcare, but if I'm going to do that, it'll be because I'd looked at all the facts. I've told you all the facts. Private childcare only works for the rich. Ordinary working class families can't afford it. I'm talking about single mothers who actually have to give up their jobs, end up on welfare and then get blamed for it. Blind Freddy can see all this. You don't even want to look at this. I can't see the point, really, can you? Liz, keep your cool. Too late, mate. Harry, it's Liz Murray. Can we have a talk? Didn't think you were that desperate. Harry, Harry, no one is talking about sacking anyone. Yeah, yeah, tell Liz I said so. And Harry, Harry, just settle down, listen to me. Ring Irene and Fran. They don't need to ring me as well. No such thing as a dead end either, Steve, so if Dallas gets the jack and doesn't stay with it, Crocker could still be three shots. Well, that's a big target. Yes. Hello, Karen. Well, when do we get to see these expressions of interest on childcare? Why the delay, Greg? How long does it take finance to check? Oh, the way you're going, I can only assume you're protecting Liz. And Greg, while I've got you on the phone, I've just had a word with Sandy Maxwell. He seems to have joined the growing gang of people who are currently pissed off with you. Well, oh, because he's not insured. Why didn't you say that in the first place? Don't blame Cole. You know it's your job to hose him down when he gets these dumb ideas. That's what we pay you for. That was Greg, right? <laughs> that was Greg. He's a nice guy. No, he's not. You don't have to pay any attention to him. You know what's crazy about this insurance business? If I'm not insured, I've got no assets, I won't get sued. But the minute I get insured, I'll get sued. Well, if you want to go on doing our jobs, just do it. This old job thing is getting out of hand. I, I don't want to be on my deathbed looking at the tear-streaked faces of my grandchildren and say, well, you know, I, don't, I did some good old jobs. <laughs> I'm sorry if you've wasted your time. No, it hasn't been a complete waste. Made a few bucks. Drank some great wine. That is very good. <laughs> and I've, uh, I've been in some great houses. Have something to eat. Cool. Only been here five minutes. I'm afraid I've got something to confess. Mm, sounds like a good start. <laughs> I had an ulterior motive for ringing you. Even better. <laughs> Liz is very worried that she's not being listened to. Yep, so I hope you don't mind. No, no, I've invited all. her to join us. No good. Sorry. I should have told you before. No. I was just worried that a possible confrontation with Liz might have been a bit much for a Sunday night. Yes, she's being very irrational about yeah, this. Yeah, she is. Not like our Liz at all. I want to be fair to her, and I thought the three of us should just sit down and thrash out this childcare thing together. Yeah, good, good. Although, personally, I wouldn't use the word thrash in a sentence about childcare, not in front of Liz. No, probably not. Here she is. Oh, Liz, good to see you. Are you sure? Of course I am. Um, sit down. Well, what can I get you to drink? Just water. Do you ever act on impulse? Impulse? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes not. It's a judgement thing. I never do. I mean, your impulses need a bit of planning, do they? I think I've become too cautious. I always wonder how things are going to affect my political life or what people will think or what my husband will think. I'm married to a very successful man. Do you think that's a bad thing? I wouldn't want to comment on your marriage. Do you think it means I'm getting old? Possibly. What do you mean, possibly? Probably. Well, I'm not getting old. You're just naturally the cautious type. Do you think I need to break out sometimes? Definitely. So it's definitely now? Well, definitely you should sometimes. Take a risk? I say live a little. That's your advice, is it, Sandy? Definitely. OK. Do you want to come to bed with me? Works away until next Wednesday. Cool. Oh, there's just one problem. I don't have any insurance. Oh, don't worry. I'm fully insured.
let me give you this reassurance, Liz. Nothing is inevitable. There is no overall grand plan to sell off childcare. I bet Greg wouldn't agree with yeah, you. Well, Greg's not the council. No, he just has his way of getting the councillors well, to do what he wants. As a matter of fact, Greg told me you gave him some figures that show you run a pretty efficient operation. <laughs> that makes me really suspicious. I don't understand why you're taking his attitude. Haven't you learnt not to trust Greg yet? Not to believe a word the guy says? Now, I'll tell you something about Greg. Greg has a difficult job because sometimes in carrying out the wishes of counsel, he has to upset Well, he them. does that very So he's not always popular. No, no, he's never been popular. But he's not always wrong. OK, tell me one thing Greg has been right about since he arrived. Right, I'll give you some examples at my own cost. Mm -hmm. Greg told me not to take on the, the De Costa court case because we'd lose and it'd cost us a lot of money. He also told me not to take on the Curie Takanoa festival thing because it wouldn't yeah, work and it'd yeah, cost yeah, us a lot yeah. of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you hadn't been off chasing wild geese, oh, Cole, we'd have plenty I'm, of money for childcare. I'm sorry, Liz, but, but childcare is not the only thing that council does. Oh, thanks. Well, I'll just pack my bags and leave now. Please, don't go. No, I've got to go, OK? My daughter's at home with my mother. But hang on, hang on, hang on. I know you feel we've overlooked you. You applied for the general manager's job. We didn't give it to you. But one day, you will make an excellent general manager. However, sometimes, Liz, you're your own worst enemy. Yeah, and sometimes I can see the future and I just don't like what I see there. It should cover mine. Sorry. That's not what I hoped would happen tonight. No, Karen, it's not what I'd hoped for either. All right, all right, yes, I know what I said before. He was just another lazy youth looking for an easy handout. But I know now that he is very talented and very hardworking, and we've wasted his time. And by way of saying sorry, I'm going to put it as a motion. I move that Council agrees to pay the return airfare of Sandy Maxwell so that Sandy Maxwell can appear at the Edinburgh Festival. Well, come on, Carl, it was your idea. Oh, yeah, I suppose I'm just wondering what's caused the change of heart. <laughs> but... <laughs> but, uh, in this case, yes, not to worry, I'll second from the chair. Any further discussion? All those in favour? All those against? Motion carried. I can't believe... Good! <laughs> Sandy, I've been trying to call you. Guess what? I got them to agree to pay your airfare to Edinburgh. The council. Oh, I don't sound a bit excited. All right. Sorry if it was a bad time. Hello? Hello? Oh. So where were you when I called you? Oh, I was busy. Oh, were you with your girlfriend? Did I ring at the wrong time? I hope so. What's she like? I don't have a girlfriend. Oh, so it's just a series of one-night stands for you, is it? Several in one night, if I can get them. <laughs> well, you might be able to jump into bed with anybody, but I'm not just anybody. Thank you for not checking my credit references. Where were you? Were you telling someone about me? As a matter of fact, I was telling a room full of people about you. If you ever tell anyone about me, I know some very tough, unpleasant people. Sorry, I just don't want my friends ringing me from Edinburgh telling me they've just had some very funny jokes about me. I don't do jokes, remember? So where were you? Robbing a bank. OK. None of my business. All the invitations gone out? All gone. Acceptances are starting to come back. Looks like you'll get everyone from all the neighbouring councils. You've got everyone very excited about this cult. You know, in this morning's Herald, there was uh, another letter asking what can be done to protect local industries against globalisation. Sounds good. Any uh, hints on what you're going to say? Oh, all we'll coming together, Greg. Anything else, Janice? This just came in. Yep. But he's just faxed in a notice of rescission motion. <laughs> She's changed her mind on the airfare for Sandy. Oh, I wonder what happened. Oh, lover's tiff. Oh, no, I wouldn't have said that, Greg. I take it back. Didn't even think it. Boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Don't move, Albert. Don't move. Hold on. I think it might have just clicked back in. I... Oh, no. 
Oh, oh, I've had back trouble before, but not like this. Oh, oh that'll be the ambulance, I reckon, For God's sure. sake, somebody tell him to turn that bloody siren off. That's a bit over the top. Ah. Look, oh. I know it was a heart attack, and I know that's medical, but he had it while he was working, and I would have thought, Greg, there was something we could do to help yeah, him. Well, I've only just moved him off volunteer status a few weeks ago, Greg. Cole. No, he hasn't got much sick leave coming. Mate, Albert Easel has been a long-term employee of this council. He's done a great job, and his care of the gardens has given us all a great deal of pleasure. Yeah, he's just doing his job. Albert is a special look, person. We're all special people, we can OK? Do. Look, if I do it for one, I'm going to have to do it for everyone, okay? I, look, I just don't want to set a precedent, that's look, all. Will you look at it, though? Yeah, all right, Cole, leave it with me. What can you tell us about your experience in childcare? The company I represent, Barassi Evans Care, has had 22 years experience in the successful management of a range of care facilities, including private hospitals, nursing homes and halfway houses. This move into childcare is a logical extension of our proven ability to manage successfully an outstanding level of care to all of our clients. One of the concerns here is the employment of the existing staff. Do you intend to offer them more jobs? Where else would I find better trained or qualified people? But could you give us a guarantee that you will employ all staff? Well, they may not want to work for me. But is it your intention to employ the existing staff, assuming they do or want to work for you? My first concern is for the children, because that's what we're here for. And second, for the parents, because they need to not worry about their children. And third, for the staff. I would want the whole transition to be as smooth as possible for everyone. Mm. Thank you, Mrs Hennessy. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Greg, anything you want to add to that? Oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, the, uh, the offer from Barassi Evans is far and away the most attractive and the most comprehensive, um, and it offers us a considerable saving when you compare their costs with our own. But you've um, inflated our costs, Greg. Point of order. Yeah, now, look, I'm sorry to do this to you, Liz, but no interruptions. Well, I'm sorry, Mr Mayor, but the, the figures on these costs are not the figures I gave, Greg. No, I checked your figures, Liz, in detail with finance, and really, you left a lot out. The true cost of running childcare is a lot more than you think it I is. I move that we accept the offer from Barassi Evans. I second the motion. We're not really going to do this, are we? Haven't we learned that people have had enough of privatisation? Well, I would have said that too, but this report's very positive. And if you give people a choice between childcare staying in council's hands and a reduction in the rates, which do you think they'll take? Yeah, but there won't be a reduction in the rates. Liz, 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 I'm sorry. Councillor Bond. It's exploitation. Putting a fast buck before... It's our kiddies we're talking about, not some assembly line. Crikey, taken from the poor and given to the... No, I draw the line, I draw the line. I move that the motion be put. Yes, just a sec, uh, I think you want to say something, Councillor Schumacher. Could I point out that our own record on privatisation isn't very good? I could point out to the South Island Gardens contract and in particular to what has happened to Albert. Mm. Do you want to respond to that, Greg? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Look, I would be the first to acknowledge that the South Island contract was a learning curve, OK? And what I learnt was to be very careful the next time. So with this, I have been through it with a fine-tooth comb. Now, regarding Albert, I've looked into that, and considering the amount of time he has worked for this council and the pleasure that his work has brought all of us, I think an ex-gratia payment would be appropriate. Mm, a generous one? Oh, very generous under the circumstances. Mm. He was a special person. Could we get back, please, to childcare? Thanks for that, Greg. Uh, well, there's just one question that I'd like to ask. Uh, Mrs Hennessy... The, uh, the price you've set to run childcare for us is very attractive, but are you confident that you can uh, stand by your figures? Of course. That is what my reputation is built on. I can't believe you're doing this. She gives me the greatest. I don't like her either, but I have to make a rational decision, not an emotional one. Those in favour? Those against? Motion is carried. Liz, are you okay? I just wanted to see if you were right. You know what really disappoints me is I, I thought I could talk to you and I thought you would listen. I didn't realise you were just another dumb councillor who that day they were elected becomes an instant expert on everything. Councillor Marchant, do you have a rescission motion you want to make? Oh, I'd like to rescind that. Go ahead then, Councillor. Go ahead what? Move your rescission motion. No, I'm rescinding it. If we have a rescission motion on our papers, Councillor. Yeah, I don't well, want The only it. way to deal with it is for you to move a rescission motion on your rescission motion. No. Read my lips. We are sending Sandy to Scotland. I'll even give him $1,000 of my own money to make sure we get rid of him. 
Good. Good. I've asked Sandy to MC on Wednesday night. I think Janice has let you all know that we had a very good response from the neighbouring councils. Hillcrest and Birriga will be fully represented and I'm assuming you'll all be there too? Yes? Yeah, sure. Good. Mr Mayor, your scheme for supporting local business against globalisation and so on, I suppose you know they're doing this up in the Hunter Valley. They're setting up a lot of new computer industries. And in Coffs Harbour they're thinking of replacing the big banana with the big silicon chip. And there are wonderful examples from all around the world. That's right. It's happening all over and in order to make sure our neighbouring councillors were up to speed on this, we've photocopied all this information and sent it out to them. So they'll be prepared for your speech when you make it, Cole. Thank you. Always like to have an educated audience. It's in all the books that I gave you. Yeah, you should have given me a summary. You said you'd read it all. Well, you know I've got a lot of work to do. What's going to happen to Liz? Don't worry about Liz and I promise you all our childcare workers will get jobs. Right. Do you have my word? I hope so, Cole. Hang on. Hang on, look, I want Wednesday night to be a great night. Yeah. And I've got a lot of people coming. I want to make a good impression. You know, I want to show that here in Arcadia Waters, we're on top of this globalisation thing. You know, we're stepping forward into the new century. And? Look, I've been working very hard on this. Oh, here it comes. All I need is a bit of help with the speech. OK. Give me a ring when you've read all the books. I was crying. I, I, I didn't see properly what... Yeah, so maybe you should have a good cry yeah. and get it over and done with before you drive anymore. <laughs> oh, God, I'll never get home. <laughs> Here. And take your time. Keep it. Hey, Cole. How you going? Oh, all right. On the mend, they tell me. Ah, oh, well, that's the go. Listen, I, uh, brought you a little something. Huh? What is this? Oh, just a little something from all of us at the council. Oh, mother. You must have put a gun to Greg's head to get this. <laughs> hey? Almost. <laughs> uh, by the way, you don't mind a photograph, do you? Oh, hell no. <laughs> So how's your reading going? Oh, good, mate, good. Just some amazing things in some of those books. You know, we haven't got Sandy. No? No one can find him. Oh, gee. Might have gone to Scotland already. Well, maybe it's not such a bad thing after all. Every time Sandy stands up, Biddy seems to grab the limelight. However, I am going to have to think of something quick for tonight, otherwise it'll fall flat on its face. How's your speech going? I wonder if I should announce a cemetery point development. Yeah, I know uh, Morgan and George wouldn't want me to, but I need something big. Oh, well, you can always take your clothes off and do the can-can. Oh, come on, mate, I haven't got time for this. A lot of important people coming tonight. I need something for them. You want me to look like a complete nutter dickhead. Hello, Biddy. Colin. Hello, Warwick. How are you? Carl. Gee, I tell you what, your young Sandy's been very enterprising. He's not my young Sandy. <laughs> very self-help, very free enterprise. You know, the night that you convinced us to pay for his airfare to Scotland, he was up at Birriga doing his act for them. They liked him so much they voted to pay for his fare too. <laughs> when was this? Monday before last. Oh, well, he certainly did say he was busy that night. Darling? When you're away. Oh, never mind. Get this. The week before he was at Hillcrest, they're paying for his fare to Edinburgh as well. So I reckon with your personal cheque, young Sandy, he'd be travelling in style. Nice to see you, Warwick. What was that about a personal check? Nothing. Um, distinguished visitors, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming. Uh, now, the world is a very exciting, uh, uh, very exciting place. The future is, in fact, a very exciting world. Uh, one which we've been looking into with the help of a couple of tremendously exciting books. Uh, in particular, I got a lot out of a book called uh, Back to the Corner Store by Dr Priya Samajwadi. Now, um, I did think about giving you a summary of some of the very exciting ideas that are in this book, and uh, then I thought how much better it would be if I could actually get Dr Samajwadi to talk to you. Hello, Dr Samajwadi. Hello there, Mr Mayor. 
Um, I understand, uh, Doctor, although you uh, live in Vancouver, you are at the moment in uh, London? I am. I'm in my hotel room and it's very early in the morning and I'm talking to you on the internet through my laptop computer and via my mobile telephone. Right, so uh, not only are we uh, just talking about uh, the impact of the internet, but um, we're actually demonstrating it. And as I say in my book, local shopping can take advantage of this communication revolution by getting onto the net. And at a very low cost by using the available existing technology, which any person or service... Dr. Samajwadi, are you there? H hello? Uh, Dr. Dr. Samajwadi? Carl Dunkley can put his shoes under my bed any time he wants to. Well, I'm a mere public servant. I just have to follow the rules. Oh, what are you saying, George? You want another trip to Hawaii? No, I think George is telling us something else. Don't you ever do that to me again. I thought you'd check it Mate, first. I shouldn't have to check it. It's how I feel, Cole. Because just last week, Cole said to me, Franny said, you know the way he does. He said, Fran, do you think I should think about not being mayor? And? I said, well, maybe you should, Cole. Good evening, Karen. Enjoy your evening. <laughs> I relied on you. I trusted you. Right, you've done a bad deal. Hey! A bit of respect! Bit of respect, you there! Bit of respect! If you're gonna make smart Alec remarks, come on! Low in! Free 